what we are going to talk about is introduction to metro bridges and their structural design. So, like I said, I worked in Ahmedabad Metro, Noida Metro, Mumbai Metro, Delhi Metro, Kolkata Metro, and a lot of metro projects I have worked. And in there, I have found many, many important things that it which differ from one project to another, but the concept remains the same. You know, if you stick to the concepts, you can you know tackle most of the things in one go. So, I'm going to start now. My slides. Okay, uh, as we, you, you, must, you all guys must be reading newspapers and you know everything. So the government is spending a lot on infrastructure. It is borrowing from rich countries like Japan and US and Russia, and it's infusing the lot of what you can you can see a cash into the infrastructure sector in India, especially in terms of railways like metro and high speed and semi speed railway. Okay, so India is expected to become the world's third largest construction market by 2022. It is uh, going to be a boom for a structural engineer, you can say. There's going to be a huge demand of skilled. Now, take this word skilled very seriously, okay? Civil engineers for the planned infrastructure project, skilled manpower for execution, planning and design. These are the three verticals which we talk about in any project. Is going to be the need of our students pursuing civil engineering and the engineers who are at the inception of their careers need to shape their skills to match with the requirements of the industry. If whatever you have learned in college and everything, you have to just reshape it in such a way you are good at the implementation of that. Okay. For developing these skills, the students and the engineers need to have a learning program, which is strictly focused on the things which take them to the next level and they can have an edge over the others because we have a lot of engineers in the market what makes we have a lot of skilled engineers also but what makes you different from the others so okay anyone can do the structural design okay but what makes you different from the others in how much time you can design one assignment given to you and how effectively you can do it and what all mistakes you can avoid it so it's all going to matter in this Okay, in fact, this learning is going to be helpful, not only for the individual, but also for the nation's progressive development as a whole. So what when we say make in India, you know, so what we as an individual can contribute it are through our skills, we cannot just go and do something else, we can contribute through our skills. Okay, now, the introduction of typical infrastructure project, what does it looks like? Okay, well, like we have a family tree over here. Okay, we have a super client. Super client is the one who is the chief funder who funds the whole project. Okay. Sometimes the super client and client, they are the same thing sometimes, but as I said, that super client can be different from the client. He can appoint a client. Okay. He can just go and relax and the client takes care of the project. So kind of, okay. Then there's a contractor contractor appoints the subcontractors. There's a consultant Now consultant is can be, you know, like the structural consultants. It's a EM construct consultants, architectural consultants. There are many kinds of consultants which are available, you know. Okay, then proof checker. Proof checker, who's a proof checker and proof consultant? Most of you who are in the job, they must be aware of these terms. So proof checker and proof consultant are the, those that team who checks the work which is being submitted from the consultant for the project. Okay. So that it can be finally approved and it can be sent to the site, you know, for final execution. So who are the third parties? The third parties are the ones who are involved. Like if the consultant is preparing some drawing and the proof checker wants those drawings or the design to be approved by the third party else also. So third party can be any, you know, big uh, company or small company. It doesn't matter. It depends on the project. And then there are approved vendors, approved vendors from which the material is going to be supplied. So what is the basically a material which we are concerned in civil engineering is steel and concrete. This is the main, main thing. Okay. Steel can be like your HYSD bars, high yield steel, and it can also be the tendons of a pre-stressed. Okay. So, okay. The verticals of an infrastructure project, they are planning, design and execution. As I said in the previous slide, the planning, it encompasses the overall working of the project is schedule. It's billing, it's overall finances, the resource management and the MIS, the management information system. Okay. Design comprises of the overall architectural MEP and structural design of the project as per the client's requirement. So this is very important as per the client's requirement, because if there are 10 companies in the market, they can have their 10 different designs with their different drawings. 
but what is the client's requirement does he want it to be through a or does he want it through way b okay so and what is the execution vertical is dealing with execution is the and uh, it's the last vertical you can say the end user what will the end user getting who is the end user here end user is the first of all is the client and then end user is the people of the country who are going to use that infrastructure okay so what they are going to see in the executed entity so it's the execution the product management skills are very basic requirement for smooth function of planning and execution verticals in particular talking about the design which is very important vertical of the project every client wants okay the role of a structural design vertical similarly to planning the design vertical is also the backbone of an infrastructure project if the design is bad or if the design is good it decides the overall you know the story of the project okay so what do you call a bad design bad design is like for example putting a lot of steel inside the columns in the beams it's it's uneconomical it can take the project you know to galloping cost okay the changes in design from the pre bit to post bit stages lead to massive changes in the project cost for any infrastructure project particularly of national importance like a metro project design ought to be in line with the standards set by the codal practices so what are the usually codes of practices which we use in the metro they are the indian railway standards irs okay and we obviously take the help of uh, some indian irc indian road congress codes like sp as some special publications also or irc 6 we take help of some loads and everything but the main is uh, indian railway standards and it should adhere to the client requirements too okay so say there are sometimes some two conflicts from in two codes then whatever the client is needed we have to go with that okay keeping both these things in line every project has a design basis report dbr dbr is prepared for each and every project okay irrespective of the cost and everything it, it is prepared for every project you have to stick it's like a bible which you have to follow okay which is provided by the client in the pre bid stage on the basis of which the bids are submitted by various contractors okay any changes in the consecutive stages of the project in the dbr lead to financial implications which can be claimed by the contractor as per the contract type and norms so you can see the importance of the design basis report here okay it's very important so what is your role as a structural designer if you are a structural designer in a metro project what is your role the consultant which is generally hired by the client in terms of item rate contract and hired by the contractor in case of design and build contract in either case the design consultant has to fulfill the minimum criteria set by the client for providing the deliverables now what are the deliverables here the design and the drawings these are the two deliverables so design is checked thoroughly on the basis of that design we prepare the drawings which are the finally the uh, items which are sent to the site for execution within the stipulated timeline set by the project planning team so this is very very important because if you are delaying one drawing by like uh, two days it can have a effect on the execution by for 10 days you know so it can alter the cost the design consultant has various divisions like structural enm architectural high road geotech highway etc there are many verticals inside the design also so what we are going to deal here is or we are going to discuss here is structural the consultant is supposed to have a highly skilled team of structural engineers which should be competent enough for producing and validating the design and drawings required in the project okay these engineers should be skilled enough to un- understand the requirements of client requirements of codes involved and they also should be well versed with both basic and advanced concept of engineering and their proper application so unless and until your concepts are clear you cannot you know start the design even if you like start it you will find a lot of difficulties in it and it will delay the overall process of design your concepts are the main thing they are expected to have hands on experience on the tools involved in design of the structures so that they can timely produce the design and drawings and submit them to the client to approve consultant for their review so okay the, the timely submission is very important okay and timely and correct obviously okay now let's have a sneak peek into the metro wired bridge arrangement what does a typical metro wired bridge looks like now it has a uh, three components you must be aware of, uh, most of you the, the terms and if few of you are not aware of the terms you can ask me in the q and a okay 
A petroviaduct bridge is subdivided into the following three parts. Sub superstructure, substructure and foundations. Some consultants or some engineers group substructure and foundation into a single thing. So it's basically superstructure and substructure. That's it. Okay. So superstructure. What is superstructure? Now basically what divides the superstructure and substructure is the bearing part. Now you must be aware of the word bearing. What is a bearing? The bearing are the entity which transfers the load which is coming from the superstructure to the substructure okay it's the interface you can say okay so and you are going to ask me that uh, what what if there is no bearing in the structure so it, it can be integrated also yeah it can be integrated in that case our substructure is the pier and the portion below it okay pier is the column the column in viaduct we call it pier okay so superstructure superstructure is the topmost part Okay, supports the rail, plinth, the parapets, walkway, and most importantly, the rolling stock itself. What is the rolling stock? Rolling stock is the train, okay, the bogey, which moves over it. Like superstructure can be the box girder, a eye girder, composite plate girder, steel truss, super T girder, U girder, solid slab, void slab, and sector. There are many kinds of superstructures. You know, in, in different countries, they follow like different. In uh, Australia, they follow the super T girder. So uh, it's a pre-stressed uh, member, which they just put it on the pier, uh, pier heads, and they can just cast the top slab, and they can move the traffic. Okay. So and the next is substructure. Substructure. This part starts from the. So I and what I am discussing, I am discussing in very brief. Okay. So if you guys have any doubt, you can just ask me in the Q and A. It's very brief description I am giving. In substructure, this part starts from the bearings, as I told. The bearings, the pier, pier cap. Now, if below the bearings, there's the pier cap, the head of the pier, basically. The pier and usually counted in as the substructure, the part of the wider load from the superstructure get transferred to the substructure through the bearings only. Okay. So where does this load go? It goes into the foundation. From the foundation, it is distributed in the earth near to it. Okay. There comes the geotech room, basically. So as described above, the loads get transferred from the superstructure to the substructure and finally to the foundation which transfers the load to the soil in contact with the foundation Met of the metro bridges. Generally, pile foundation is preferred in metro bridges. In 90% case, if the soil is like good or if the soil is very, very bad, then the pile foundation length increases. And, you know, it's uh, uh, mostly in 90, 95% cases, it's pile foundation only. Okay. Unless you are going, your, your metro is crossing a river. So in the case of river, it, it can be a well foundation. Okay, so some design engineers, as I told, they group the foundation and substructure in the same category. So there is no need to worry. Now the cross sections of a metro bridge with different superstructure. Now here comes the interesting part. Here are the some cross sections from some of my projects which I worked, and it's like you can see over here. I think my mouse is visible to you. I am just uh, assuming that. Okay. So this part is the walkway is the, this one. This is completed. This is parapet. Okay. This is a walkway. This is a crash barrier. You can say uh, it's not a, basically a crash barrier. Crash barrier is something which, where a vehicle comes and hits. It's a parapet only. Some people call it crash barrier. This is the, this part is the plinth. It's the plinth. Okay. It can be precast. It can be cast in situ. Generally it's cast in, in situ in case of metros. Okay, now this is the drainage arrangement which is followed. This is a box girder. Okay, this is the end section. This this part is the diaphragm of the box girder. This box girder is resting on the bearings, and below the bearings, the larger rectangle you can see is the pedestal. The pedestal is the part which holds the on the top of which the bearing is seated. Okay, so uh, once. Uh, one of my senior engineer, he asked me that why the pedestal is constructed. You can just, you know, sit, uh, uh, place the superstructure over the directly on the pier cap. Why not like this? So it, the reason is the compression forces are very high and to distribute them, basically to disperse them, we need to con construct this pedestal. We need to have it's a good engineering practice. Okay. It's very necessary. And then there's a, this is the pier cap. This is actually a cantilever pier. So can't live up here. You can see this. This is eccentricity. Okay. And this is the pier, pier cap. Okay. 
this is a drainage and here, here is the crash barrier now this is particularly the crash barrier what you can see because if there is a road here nearby the pier vehicles can come and hit it hit the pier so we need to design this crash barrier for those loads okay so that no harm would come to the pier okay and this is the pile cap pile cap this is the pile so pile pile cap pier pier cap okay so this is generally counted in substructure okay this portion now this is another case here is the portal beam it's a two leg portal the frame portal frame basically okay and the top of it is the, these are the eye girders one two three and four okay so we can distribute there here also but the people generally go with like this kind of arrangement some or some prefer like two separate arrangements like one here and one set of arrangement here okay so it depends on the client's requirement and discussions so this is the pier this is the same same arrangement is there this is a portal it's an integrated this is completely integrated in some case there's a construction joint here in some cases nowadays what they are following like they are giving the bearings here as well so this is a simply supported portal beam kind of thing okay now this is the composite plate girder in many cases if for example your span is uh, like 40 meters okay where the eye girders and all the PSC eye girders if they become it very difficult to erect at the side now there we go with the composite plate girders okay this is these are the studs we can see here shear studs they provide the interface uh, shear connector with, between the slab and the girders kind of this is provided in IG, PSC eye girder also in RCC also because you have to leave those shear studs to connect with the deck slab okay so this is the same arrangement, so same typical kind of arrangement. This is a pier cap. So it's a it's it's not a cantilever pier cap, it's a balanced cantilever pier cap. Okay, so it can be RCC, it can be PSC also. It depends on the span. This is span. Okay. If the span is like four meters, six meters can be, we can go through RCC, okay. But if it's a large span, like this here, for example, 12 meters, 13 meters, the RCC is very, very difficult to design. We have to go with PSC. Okay as concrete then here is this is a balance cantilever it's a very interesting structure and it has a very very interesting construction mechanism if you guys in, are interested you can google it after this webinar there here this is a construction joint here it's integrated there's no bearing here okay like the case i was telling you there's no bearing here it's completely integrated here now like uh, it moves like the form traveler. The form traveler is a device which constructs the segment. These are the segments. The form traveler moves here and the form traveler moves here. Okay. So it moves symmetrically in both the directions. And we have to maintain the, uh, you know, it, it has to be designed. This pier and the foundation has to be designed for different construction stages. So in this case, construction stages play a very, very important role. Okay. So here is the pot PTF bearing. It's a pot PTF bearing, and here is the pot PTF bearing. So these are not transferring the moments, okay? So these are only for vertical reactions and horizontal, obviously. Like horizontal forces, they can transfer, but not the moments. Moments can only be transferred through the rigid connection, which is over here. Okay, this this is another arrangement of the PSC eye girder, which I was talking about previously. There was a joint case, and these are two separate tracks, okay? So it depends on what is having less implication on the financial implication on the project. We can go with that option. There's a detailed study behind this, everything. And this part which you can see here is, this is a shear key, which is basically it's in case uh, for seismic arrestor, in case of seismic activity, it can just take the forces in the transverse direction. Okay. This one is the uh, U girder. This is a pre-stress, pre-tension basically. It's, uh, it's a pre-tensioned item okay and the rest thing remains in the bearing the pier cap and everything the service structure so this is a metro station cross section okay so what is a metro station cross section looks like nowadays uh, in all the parts of, of india basically now uh, almost we are going with this kind of cross section because in previous if you see till you know last uh, six years or seven years ago there were totally monolithic stations which were followed. Nowadays, it's like uh, they are they are calling for the bridge kind of construction for the metro stations as well. So actually, if you see the metro project is a combination of viaduct, 
okay which requires the concepts of highway structures metro stations they require the concepts from buildings okay and now the other metro stations also they require the concepts of your viaduct as well because there are simply supported girders at the concourse and the platform level okay this is the roof which is seated and here is the viaduct the viaduct part of the station basically it just you know the train passes from here and this is the lift cross section is a lift which is supported from this diaphragm reinforcement has been taken